If you are trying to kick the sugar and carb habit, but keep having thoughts about sugar and carbs till you eventually give in, then this video is for you. If you don't know me, my name is Echo and I create content about how an everyday average person can work through their problems and work through their struggles to create the life they've always wanted to live. Okay, so let's get to work. If you are trying to get over your sugar and carb addiction and it is harder than you ever imagined, then you need to put some tools in your tool belt. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about not going to war with yourself. So have you ever waged an internal argument that led to you eventually losing? By that I mean, have you ever argued with yourself and it eventually led to indulging or binging? And those internal arguments don't stop there. They can spread to various parts of our lives. They can lead to overspending when you are trying to budget. They can lead to bringing stuff into the house when you are trying to declutter. Going to war with yourself is terrible because somebody always loses and the somebody that always loses is you, which sucks. Um, it does. It sucks because these internal arguments, they seem to always lead to doing the very thing that you are trying to resist. And so that's what I wanted to talk about today. How do we stop going to war with ourselves? To give you an example, I'm going to talk about going to the movies. So I love going to the movies. I love, love, love it. It's one of my favorite things to do. And um, I got in this habit where I always wanted to buy a popcorn and some soda because our theater had a good deal. You could buy a large popcorn and a large soda and they were refillable. Um, but that, <laughs> that is beside the point. So I always got in the habit of wanting to buy popcorn and soda every time I went to the movie theater until I decided that I was going to take better control of my health. I was going to take better control of my budget. And I was like, I'm not going to buy popcorn and soda anymore when I go. And I would even tell my husband Today when I go, I am not going to buy a popcorn and soda. And I felt really strong until I walked in and then I smelled popcorn. And then I was like, oh, you want popcorn. And I immediately started arguing with myself and saying, no, you don't want popcorn. You don't need popcorn. You are trying to stick to your diet. You are trying to save money. And I had all these reasons that I pushed back on the idea that I didn't want popcorn. And I would go into the movie theater and I couldn't even enjoy going to the movies because I was sitting there and probably the first third of the movie, I was like, you want popcorn, you should go get popcorn. Look at those people in front of you. They are enjoying their popcorn. If you were eating popcorn, you would enjoy your popcorn. And I would just go back and forth with myself like that over and over until eventually you know what happened. I went and I got my popcorn and I got my soda and I ate more than I probably would have eaten if I had bought the soda and popcorn to start with. Have you ever chosen to go to war over this thought that you are having or over something that you don't want to do until eventually that argument that you are having back and forth, you finally say, well, screw it just this one time. Uh, and then you go ahead and do it. And then comes this overwhelming guilt because you feel that you couldn't stick with it and that you let yourself down. How do you get over going to war? Because you already know that going to war with yourself mentally is something that you don't like. You already know the outcome that it's going to lead to, you know, eventually doing the very thing you're trying to, <laughs> the very thing that you're trying not to do. How do you, how do you not go to war? The, the Swiss philosopher Carl Jung said that which we resist not only persists, but grows. So that means the more we resist something, the greater our desire to do that thing gets. And so the key to not going to war is learning how to handle our thoughts differently. But what do you do when you have those thoughts? Because resistance is a natural part of those thoughts. Like your the thought comes to your mind and you're like, oh, I don't want to do that. That that I know where that leads. And so how do you handle that? How do you treat those thoughts or how do you react to those thoughts in a way that is not resistance? For this mindset shift, I actually drew on something called acceptance commitment therapy, which has to do with not decreasing the amount of times you have these thoughts, but rather on decreasing your desire to control these thoughts. And from acceptance commitment therapy, there is a technique called cognitive diffusion. 
And that sounds really difficult, but it's actually pretty simple. It means the ability to distance yourself from your thoughts. And the first thing that you need to help you with cognitive diffusion is to understand that you are not your thoughts. I know that might sound a little weird because a lot of the times when we talk to ourselves, when we use our internal voice, we think of those thoughts as coming from ourself. We think we are those thoughts. We think those thoughts are our desires. Michael Singer, who wrote The Untethered Soul, I believe described this concept the best. The way he summed it up was this. He said, you are not your thoughts. You are the person that hears your thoughts. And the truth is that we have thoughts floating in and out of our mind all day. And when we focus on something is when we solidify that thought and make that thought important. The idea of cognitive diffusion is to notice that you have these thoughts, acknowledge that you have these thoughts, but understand that you do not have to get caught up in these thoughts. And I think that that's great because I always thought that there was like one thing I could do and that was resistance. But my very idea that I needed to resist is what caused me all my problems. And so now just having that ability to understand that thoughts are thoughts and that I'm going to have them. Sometimes I'm going to drive by Jack in the Box and be like, oh, I really want Jack in the Box tacos because I love Jack in the Box tacos. And you know what? To have that thought is okay. And I can be like, oh yeah, you do like Jack in the Box tacos. To realize that just because you have a thought doesn't mean that you need to give it the importance that I have been giving it in the past. Hi, editing echo here. So while I was watching this, the thing that popped into my head is I treat these thoughts this way because I think that they should be action thoughts. While the thought might just be about food, I make it an action thought by trying to decide which action I am going to take. It becomes not just a regular thought, but a thought that's like, should I or shouldn't I? And that is what I actually go to war over. I really like this tip and the reason I really like it is because for the longest time I thought that going to war with myself or resistance was the only option I had when I had thoughts that were contrary to what I wanted to do. I thought that if I could just build up my resistance, if I could, if I could just build it up like it was a muscle within myself, then things wouldn't be so hard. But in reality, I was the one that was making them hard by resisting. And so this concept that I can learn to treat my thoughts differently and be able to overcome them is a step in the right direction that will help me overcome my sugar and carb cravings, that will help me in moments when I am having these thoughts that are contrary to my goals, these thoughts that are keeping me from doing the things that I wanna do. And these thoughts that in the past, because I resisted them, eventually led to me giving in and doing the very things that I did not want to do, which which meant that I could never reach my goals because I, I was constantly waging this war within myself and I could never win. And so this idea that there is a different way to treat these thoughts, that I can think of myself as a separate being from my thoughts and be like, I am the person that hears my thoughts. I am not the thoughts. And like knowing that I can acknowledge them and be like, yeah, you had that thought. It's not a big deal. And just like let that thought float away. Let that thought go means that I have that tool in my tool belt to help me when these thoughts happen because they will inevitably happen. They, they are part of change. When you change, these thoughts probably happen more than they would on a normal day because your actions are so different and these thoughts pop back up because they're like, a memory of what you used to do, but you can just let them go. And so far, this has really been helping me when those thoughts come to mind, knowing that I do not have to act on them, that I do not have to argue with myself. I think that is the biggest one, that I do not have to argue with myself because that was just so mentally draining. So if you enjoyed this tip and would like to hear more content like this, please like and subscribe, and I will talk to you next time. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Bye.